Hi and welcome um, today. Thank you so much for your time. My name's Caitlin and I'm a student on placement with Dundee Volunteer and Voluntary Action currently. DVVA is a large organisation um, that helps third sectors um, become more resilient and sustainable. They do this in many different ways and one is they provide um, Dundee-based organisation support with good governance at trustees level. So it very links in to Trustees Week currently. Um, can you introduce yourself and tell me a little bit about? Yeah, um, so my name's uh, Lewis Paul. Um, I'm currently a final year uh, law student at the University of Dundee. Um, and I very recently founded uh, a charitable organisation um, called the Dundee Sustainability Group. Um, so we want to work with um, the local community and other stakeholders towards the implementation of the uh, UN Sustainable Development Goals in Dundee. Uh, can you tell me a bit about how you got into that role and how it all began? Yeah, um, so I, I was appointed uh, a fellow of the Royal Society of Arts back in May of this year. Um, and they've been running a series called um, From Crisis to Sustainability. Um, so sort of looking at how we can build new principles and new aspects into our society post COVID. And I found sort of the, the whole concept of sustainability and the sustainable development goals quite interesting. Um, so I went away and did some research and sort of discovered that, you know, there was a bit of a gap sort of in the market, so to speak in Dundee for, for an organization working towards that implementation. Um, our original plan was to set it up sort of as a, a student society as part of the university. Um, I actually decided to go broader um, and form a, a charitable organisation so as we could get the wider community involved in, in what was going on as well. That's great. So how did, did you form it? Like, how did it all start? Like, was it a difficult process or? Um, at first I had, um, yeah, it, it, I sort of ummed and ahed for a while about, OK, do I go ahead with this? Do I not? And sort of weighed up the, the pros and cons and. And, you know, considering it's something I've, I've never done before, it was, a, it was a brand new sort of process and experience. I was a bit like, hmm, I'm a bit un unsure here. Uh, but sort of in the end, I, I decided to just go ahead with it. Um, initially, what I did was I sort of put an interest out that I shared amongst the sort of student community um, at Dundee, sort of saying, is there anybody with an interest in sustainability and the sustainable development goals? And we can sort of get together and and have a chat and think about sort of our, our plans going forward um, and then following on from that initial conversation was when we decided to form a charitable organization um, and then put quite heavy focus on social media to recruit um, other trustees um, so our, our constitution has um, a maximum number of trustees of 12 um, so we thought it's a, it's a nice sort of decent number not too many but also not too small um, so yeah, really, really heavy focus on social media to recruit people to become trustees. Um, then everything like policies such as the constitution and, and safeguarding and, and finance, all the policies, um, I essentially had to sit down and write myself. Um, again, something I've not had much experience of before, uh, but there's loads of really good examples and templates available online. So I was able to sort of slowly um, piece things together. Um, interviewed a, a very wide range of, of candidates and sort of arrived at our final sort of board of 12. Um, we then had our first meeting um, where we ratified our constitution. And then that's when we submitted our registration um, to the regulator to become a charitable incorporated organization. Can you tell me a bit about your board? Is it like people that are in university right now or is it like older ages? Um, so we've got a we've got a mix. Um, so we've got everybody is under thirty. Um, we've got um, a mix of some students, um, some recent graduates, um, past graduates of the university. We've got someone who actually works at the university on the board as well. So we've got a really good mix and a, and a really nice skill set from everybody. Um, no one has has done anything like this before. Um, so it's it's a new experience and a, a, you know a learning experience for us all. Um, but it's, you know, it's, it's a great board and, and I'm really, really pleased with the, the people I've got working with me. So have you done something like this before, like a trustee role before, or are you new to this as well? 
Um, I've previously been involved as a trustee uh, member of an NHS clinical commissioning group. Uh, so slightly different in that it was it was a statutory function. Um, but again, that was a very community focused role for sort of engaging with the community to see what they wanted to see from the health service in their area. Um, and, you know, I was I was really passionate about taking that community and people led approach. And then that's something that I've tried to incorporate into into this new organization that we, we we put the interests and views of the community first rather than just what we think would be beneficial. That's great. So you said you mentioned about um, your board being like students and work and things. How do you and your other board members um, like manage the commitment between studies, work and being a trustee? Yeah, so it's it's a bit of an odd question for me to answer because I'm I've got a reputation for being um, a massive workaholic. So you know I work a job and I study and I do this and I do lots of volunteering as well. And and I've always been really really good at, at managing my time. Um, I was sort of quite clear from the onset when I did the recruitment what sort of commitment um, we were looking for in terms of a trustee. And um, a little bit more at the start as we sort of got things set up. Um, but then we, I sort of settled on looking at about three to four days um, per month commitment from a trustee. Um, so far, no one seems to have um, no one seems to have struggled. Um, but I've sort of embedded that ethos that we are one team. And if people are struggling and, and they're finding it difficult and they're, they're, they've not got the time to complete a certain task, that that we, we share that with each other so we can work together and and spread the workload a bit more evenly. And um, that's really really important to me that it's a an open and approachable environment where if people are finding things difficult to manage, they can they can have that conversation and, and we can look at how we can work together. That's great. So with your role being like the head of like the board, I would say, what kind of role do you play? Like what kind of things do you do month to month? Yeah, so it's sort of um, sort of basically essentially obviously we, we're a collective as, as a board, uh, but my role is sort of to sort of lead the direction of the, the, the strategy and the, and the policy making that the board does and, and and sort of managing the rest of the trustees in terms of their development and, and the opportunities they have available, uh, sort of working to address any conflict that's going on within either the wider board or any of the subcommittees, um, sort of act as that representative for the media and in the community and sort of and, and help to shape that direction and, and take a lead obviously chairing our, our board meetings uh, you know pay lays a, a big role in that um, but I was quite keen from the start to make sure we have subcommittees uh, to sort of divvy the work up and and allow people to focus on an area that they're a bit more interested in. That's great so if you had a student approach you that were that they weren't sure if they wanted to do this kind of role as a trustee what would you say to them to try and get them involved i'd say it's i'd say the first thing is to have you know a good conversation with the organization about what commitment they can expect what sort of support is available um i'd say that if the opportunity came up and, and you think you could commit the time um, definitely take it you know you should never turn down an opportunity like that it might not be a um, a topic or, or area that you've got a strong amount of knowledge on or you're you know you're, you're really really passionate about but that experience of being involved in the running of a, a charitable organization is you know I, I don't think you can get that sort of experience anywhere else you know it, it's really rewarding and, and and having that role in the, the third sector is yeah it's, it's it's really really interesting so before I set this up, I didn't know anything about sustainability, be it environmental or social or, or economic sustainability. Um, and, you know, it has been a learning curve, but I think that's been part of the experience for me and the rest of the board is actually going away, doing the research and, and, and learning more. You know, it's a, it's a good opportunity to develop your, your skill set as well as your knowledge. And, and you might find something then that you really interested in and that you want to then pursue that as a career later in life. That's great. Thank you so much for your time. It was great to speak to you and um, good luck for your future for the board. Brill, thank you very much. Thank you for having me.